Okay, so let's take a look at taking a position time graph and making a velocity time graph and also the other way around in a minute. Okay, uh, so first thing I gotta do is I gotta get my axes set up uh, and so pen uh, and a blue line for now. So if I've got position over here and I'm gonna make a velocity time graph over here, first I just wanna get a survey of what's going on. So if we take a look at this motion, I can see the object started six meters from the origin and moved closer for about three seconds. So that means I'm gonna have a negative velocity. So I need to make sure I leave room on my velocity time graph for a negative velocity. Here I've got no velocity because it's not changing position and here I've got positive velocity because it is moving away. So I'm gonna put zero right in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna call that zero meters per second, this one meters per second, two meters per second, three meters per second, negative one, negative two, and negative three. And of course I should label this, this is velocity in meters per second. Uh, that would mean over here I have my time axis, and this would be time in seconds. Okay, and I'm just gonna go by twos for now. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Cool. All right, so now I need to take a look at the slopes, right? Because the slope of a position time graph shows me velocity. But we've got to be careful, and we'll get to that one in a second. Look at this one. This is my first interval because from zero to one seconds, the slope is constant. I've got a straight line, and a constant slope I can deal with, right? Because a velocity time graph shows me instantaneous velocity and instantaneous velocity is the slope at any given point on a position time graph. Since this slope never changes, it's got a constant velocity during this time interval, and we can see that that's a slope of negative two, right? Uh, it's final position, delta x, final position minus initial position divided by my change in time is negative two meters per second. So over here on my velocity time graph, I'm gonna graph that first time interval, negative two meters per second. But then we run into an issue because from one to three seconds, this graph doesn't have a, a constant slope. From one to three seconds, this slope changes, right? It starts steep and becomes less steep. Yikes. Uh, what I know then is that the velocity is changing. It started fast and got slower. In fact, it started at negative two meters per second and ended at zero meters per second. Okay, That gives me a pretty good idea of what to do to get from a position time graph to a velocity time graph. Okay, I know at three seconds I need to not be moving. Okay, So I need to get from negative two meters per second to zero meters per second. But now I need to be very, very careful because I know that uh, the area under this curve, the area under this curve, needs to equal the displacement shown by this graph. Well, what is the displacement during this time interval? The displacement is uh, it goes from four meter, or it goes from yeah, it goes from four meters to two meters. So my change in position here is negative two meters. That means over here, I need an area of negative two meters. Uh, is that what I have if I connect this line to this dot? Well, half base times height, so my height, negative two, my base, two, two times negative two is four, divided by two is negative two, so yeah, it turns out this area does show a change of two meters, negative two meters, okay, so I'm safe with that, okay, and I'm just gonna work that out real quick. The area right here, one half the base, the base is time, two seconds, from one to three, two seconds, times the height, negative two meters per second, equals negative two meters. Okay, so my negative two meters here matches my negative two meters here, and we're good to go. Our next time interval, three to five seconds, pretty straightforward. I've got absolutely no change in position here, which means my Velocity is zero meters per second, so zero meters per second. Uh, my next time interval, five to seven seconds. Again, this one's pretty straightforward. I have another constant slope. 
constant slope means the velocity is also constant. And it looks like a slope of 1, and it's positive. So I'm going to jump up here. I'm going to have a slope of positive 1 meters per second. And that reflects the velocity of positive 1 meter per second. So again, uh, good to go. Now my last time interval here is from 7 to 10 seconds. From 7 to 10 seconds, the object is still moving away but it's getting slower, right? And it's getting slower, it started at about one meter per second, and it looks like it ends at zero meters per second. And in between, the slope changes. It's getting less and less and less steep. Now, last time, I said, well, let's just connect this up and see if it's what we have, okay? And I believe uh, that means the area under this triangle needs to match our displacement right here. Well, what is this displacement? This displacement is final minus initial, looks like 5.5 minus four, which equals 1.5 meters. Okay. So we needed to go 1.5 meters in these last three seconds, did we? Well, one half base times height. Three times one is three, divided by two is 1.5. So yes, we did. Is this always going to be the case. For us, yes. Um, this indicates a constant acceleration. Um, I'm gonna... Alright, moving on. Going the other way. The other way is always easier. At least to me, it's always easier. Um, and that's because the other way is definite. There is no, well, what if it wasn't constant acceleration? Um, because I'm never gonna give you a velocity time graph that's curved. Um, so we need to scale our axes first. Uh, so this is position in meters over here, and I'm going to start at zero because we tend to avoid negative positions. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and time down here in seconds. And again, I'll go by twos for now. Two, four, six, eight, ten. All right. And so on this one, what we want to do is take these velocities and get positions. Of course, the big question is, can I? And of course, the answer is no, I can't. I can't take a velocity and get a position. I can take a velocity and get a displacement, right? We have two relationships we've learned so far. We know that the change in position of an object divided by the change in time is equal to average velocity, okay? We saw it's an average velocity up above when it was curved and we had to uh, have a sloped velocity because we didn't know the velocity at every point in time. Well, we can just simply rearrange this equation and say, all right, that means average velocity times time is equal to change in position, right? I've just multiplied delta t to both sides of my equation. Well, average velocity times time that's really base times height, or right? Because average velocity is the height of this thing, uh, times base, which is the time here. Uh, so we're looking at area. We already knew that, but now we see the equation. Okay. Now remember, this is average velocity, not instantaneous velocity. So it's important that we break our intervals up accordingly. So our first interval is zero to two seconds. Now there's two ways we can do this. We could look at the area, which is one half base times height. Uh, and so I would say one half two times two, which equals two, okay? I guess there's three ways we could do this. The other way is we could count up the areas. There's one block, half and half. That's a total of two. The third way we could do this is we could find our average velocity. Started at zero. Uh, we ended it to, uh, it took two seconds, so the average of zero and two is one, okay? And then one times two is two. That's pretty complex, I'm not gonna do it that way. One half base times height makes the most sense to me, so two meters, that means I have a displacement of two meters. Does that help me over here on my position graph? Not really, because in one second, a displacement of two meters could look like this, or it could look like this, or it could look like this. Heck, we don't even know. It might have started down here at negative two meters, and that can look like this. So what am I going to do? 
I have to tell you a starting position. And for now, we're going to go ahead and assume a starting position of zero meters. Okay? Uh, I might occasionally tell you to start it in a different position, but today we're going to assume zero meters. All right, so starts at zero. Second later, it's all right. So I know I got to get two meters. So in two seconds, so over here. Now, can I just connect from zero to two? If I do, what does that show? That shows a constant, constant velocity, right? Because I have a constant slope, and it's a constant velocity of one meter per second. Well, my velocity time graph doesn't show that. My velocity time graph shows. Uh, a slow speed that gets faster. That means it's not a straight line over here. Okay, that means it's got to be a curved line. I told you there was such a thing as a curved line. So over here, I've got to start fairly flat and get a little bit steeper. Okay, so now I'm good to go. Next two seconds. This one is a straight velocity time graph. That means I do have a constant slope, and it's a constant slope of two, right? Two meters per second. So a constant slope of two for two seconds. So up two over one, up two over one. Okay. So now we've got a total of six meters. Is that right? Well, let's count it up. One, two, three, four, five and a half, six. Yep, six meters. Good to go. All right. So let's jump over to this time interval. Four to six seconds. Four to six seconds. This you got to be careful on. Why did I split this up right here? Well, what happens right there? It crosses the axis. That means it changes direction. So I do need to make that a different interval. From four to six seconds, it's still moving away because it's still a positive velocity, but it is getting slower. It moves one, one and a half, two meters away in these two seconds. Okay, so I know it's got to get from six meters away to eight meters away in two seconds. Can I just draw a straight line here? No, for exactly the same reason I couldn't draw this line as straight here. It starts fast and needs to get slower. So it's got a curve, it's got a curve, okay? All right, next time interval, six to seven seconds. Starts slow, gets faster, but now it's negative. Now it's changing direction. How far did it go? Well. That's the area. This area is half of a unit. So it's got to get half a meter closer over this time interval. And again, it's got a curve and it's got to get a little bit steeper because it started at zero, which is flat, to more than zero, which is not flat. All right. Next time interval. Let me switch colors. This time interval, it is still moving towards the detector. It's still moving towards the detector because this interval is still negative, right? So from seven to nine seconds, it's still moving towards. So this graph has still got to slope down. How far does it need to slope? Okay, now I'm actually going to do the math because these intervals are a little bit harder to count. So seven to nine seconds, um, we got half base times height, one half, two seconds is my base. Height is negative one meters per second, and so this is just negative one meter. So again, we can see this displacement is negative one meter in one second. Now, what about this line? Is it straight? Again, no. This is a sloped line, which indicates a change in position, and this one starts steep and gets flatter. So this one's got a curve this way. It's sort of a backwards S going on right here. And then, Oh, this was over two seconds though, so I, I drew that a little bit wrong. Okay, over two seconds. Let me correct that. Uh, so one meter in two seconds. Still backwards S, it's just not as uh, fast as a change. All right, and then for our last second, uh, of course, there's no velocity, so the position doesn't change. So this is just a straight horizontal line.